This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Marosha Shai. We are now on episode review eight, episode eight, The White Rooms. This episode of Mr. Robot is probably one of the most amazing episodes I've seen in television in a very long time. It kind of reminded me of the last episode called Henry Gale, I believe, where uh, the character Saeed uh, comes back from his trip with, uh, who was he with? He was with Charlie and Annalise, and they were verifying the story of Henry Gale, whom we, we later learned through the series of Lost, if you've never uh, seen the, the show, he turns out to be a guy, bad guy named Ben, verifying his story that he crashed on the, the island on a, a hot air balloon. And they go to track down his hot air balloon and verify that his fiance, uh, his significant other, is dead. And then he, and then Zaid comes back and he like almost attacks Ben, basically. And he does this big reveal of the going to the to the uh, crash site, finding the hot air balloon, finding the grave. And then uh, Saeed pauses and he just slams his ID and it shows uh, the name Henry Gale. But the picture on the ID is a, a black man. And obviously Ben, who is white, is not, you know, Henry Gale. And it's one of the most shocking moments of a lost it kind of culminates all the the good and in best storytelling there was on television at the time in that episode and the best telling storytelling of that particular show uh culminated in that particular episode and i'm hoping that white rose um when they do like the emmy nominations for next year is up for consideration for the writing or in the direction of that particular episode because it was just so amazing it was so great Uh, So let's get into the episode. Uh, We're going to talk about what happened in the show, and then we'll talk about what was real. Uh, While there wasn't a tremendous amount of hacking, there was a lot of computer stuff going on in the episode that was real, as well as some a bit of a social engineering and the the different types of philosophies when it comes towards hacking or approaching a problem. So let us begin. So we open up with... Darlene, which is the first time we've opened up with this character, and she's out on a balcony overlooking the city. And it's obvious that she's in a kind of like the one percenter, that the, the people that they're going up against uh, place. And it's some guy that she's sleeping with, someone she knows. And they have this interesting conversation because he's a bit of a Wall Street guy. And she's like, you know, what if all this goes away? What if all the money or everything, like civilization as pretty much as P knows it and she knows it is gone? <laughs> What would that mean? You know, what would you do in essence? And he was like, what, like a zombie apocalypse. And she goes, no, like a revolution. And he just he scoffs it off. And he's like, I, you know, I thought we had an agreement about, you know, checking the politics out the door. So they obviously have a kind of a long term intimate relationship of some sort. And she and he and they have this conversation and you know yeah he has to get to work and sp- saving the world by spreadsheets by you know one spreadsheet at a time and he's like you know there's stupid people in the world and he's a smart person he gets paid very well for being smart and it's not just you know the rich and the poor there's people in the middle there's survivors like Darlene and that you know basically in essence things are not going to end and he you know he leaves work and leaves her there at the apartment his apartment and. <clears throat> She goes and she starts searching for the apartment because she's looking for a safe. And she finds a safe, which is in a wall. And she uses a bit of social engineering, which we'll get back to in um, what things are real on this show. But she opens the safe and she gets his gun. And then she takes his gun and she leaves. Then we go to a little bit, kind of follow Darlene. And she goes to a ballet class and there's Angela. So we're wondering, you know... We're wondering, you know, is she following Angela? What she's doing with Angela? She's like really close to Angela. She's stalking Angela for some reason. And it turns out uh, that Angela and Darlene know one another. And they know one another for a very long time. And they're united by the subject of Elliot. Uh, You know, Darlene, uh, Angela was on the phone with Ollie and they were arguing. And I guess Ollie was telling her about the the hacker from last episode telling him they need to do something. And, you know, Angela doesn't care. You know, she's like, "It's, it's Ollie's problem. And Darlene is like, you know, inquiring to Angela, you know, are you going to go get get back with that guy? And she's like, no, 
she she's not and they have a conversation about Elliot and how it basically is that these these two are constantly worrying about Elliot and so it's obvious that there's some kind of relationship yet we don't know what it is at this point in, in the episode that, that they know one another obviously they have some kind of connection to not only themselves but to Elliot as well and then we, we continue to follow Darlene and she's on the subway and she's freaking out she gets her hand into the purse because she sees two Chinese men that are staring at her and then they approach her and she has her hand on the gun and they, they give her instructions they're obvious from the, the, the from the dark army which she suspected that they were and that they're giving her the, the, the instructions to meet White Rose so we go a little bit further and Darlene meets up with Elliot and he basically she basically tells him that the meeting's on this is what you need to do and she hands Elliot the gun that she stole Elliot it's like, I don't even know know what to do with it, even if I had this, and he doesn't want the gun. And Darlene gives it, the gun back to him and says, you're going to meet my rose. You're going to go be in the dark army. These are dangerous people. You need to be careful, Elliot. You need to protect yourself. And he's like, no, I, I don't need this. So he gives the gun back to Darlene. And so Darlene's a little frustrated. So she takes Elliot's phone and he goes, what are you doing? You, I'm calling you. I'm calling me from your phone so you can have my number. We got to protect ourselves. And he's like, you, no, that that's not part of the plan. And she goes, that's for F society. Us not knowing one each other is for F society. We need to protect one another. We need to protect each other. And so he, she calls herself and now Elliot has Darlene's uh, phone number. And so he, he, you know, he walks away from her and Darlene takes the gun and puts it in the popcorn machine um, because they're at the F Society hangout. And then Mr. Robot comes around and he goes to Elliot and he's like, you need to get rid of Darlene's number. And he's like, I'm not going to use it. And he goes, you need to get rid of the number. There's rules for a reason. And he's, and Elliot's like, it's, it's, you know, he's kind of dismissive of Mr. Robot's concerns. It's going to be fine. Um, And so Elliot basically leaves and now we get to Tyrell and Tyrell is freaking out he basically has just murdered somebody and he is freaking out he does not know what to do he's kind of unhinged and this is a state that we have not previously seen uh, Tyrell in really because he's always been kind of in control I mean we've seen some explosive explosive anger and outbursts when plans don't come together for him but he is just full on sweating bullets here so Tyra Willick is at work and uh, he's just obviously freaking out and he runs into a guy and he starts he just flips out this guy who spilled all this coffee on him and it's because Tyrell is just paranoid he overhears a conversation and he thinks they're referencing you know what happened but he got distracted. He runs into this guy. Coffee spills on him. He, he flips out. He keeps going on. He runs into his assistant. His assistant tell, he, he wants all his appointments canceled. He, he doesn't want to be disturbed. Um, his assistant, off, you know, is talking to him. And he she's like looking at him and his, you know, because he has coffee on him. And he looks down and he kind of has like this kind of almost like a manacle joker laugh. And he, he like goes you know yes I, I would like some coffee and then he goes into the office and he has an appointment with Gideon um, that's what his assistant was telling him is he Gideon was there and he is um, you know from all safe and he has he was insistent on seeing Tyrell so he sits down with Gideon and, and Gideon tells him about the what Angela had told him about the break of custody about the basically in essence that the DAT file, because of the break in custody, cannot be used in court. And that thus, you know, makes uh, Colby will no longer be facing charges. So uh, he also tells them about the uh, honeypot. A honeypot is, uh, well, we'll get into what a honeypot is, but basically he's taking the server that Elliot has the F Society root file and uh, he has it on lockdown in essence to just to save things to make the, the review go a little bit faster here. Uh, and Tyrell is very fascinated by this and he wants all his um, Gideon's findings on this whole whole matter about the honeypot and the, the DAT file. He doesn't be, seem to be terribly concerned about Colby. He doesn't really care about that, but he is concerned about the, the honeypot. And then uh, Gideon gets a text message from Lloyd Chung, which is the co-worker at Allsafe, saying that their network is down 911. And so basically their meeting ends and Gideon goes back to back to work Tyrell goes to work on his computer and tries to get into the honeypot server and he tries to look into the information and he sees 
um, after doing a, a few clicks there, and we'll go, we'll talk about that in what's real. Uh, that F Society, there is a log for an F Society, a root file there, and then he tries to enter it, but he doesn't have permission to enter it. And then his assistant comes back in and says that the police are there and they wanted to question him. And he's like, why? You know, because there was a body on the roof and is they're not saying who it was, but it's very tragic. Tyrell gets up. He gets up from his office. He says, you know, tell the police I'll, I'll make an appointment. Work has to get done. Connect me to the Dulles server firmer. I'll take everything on my mobile. And he leaves the office. Now we're back, cut back to Gideon and, and, and all safe and things are at a panic there. So everyone's in a panic and it's obvious that the malware that Angela had installed from the hackers or from the Dark Army is working on the system. Uh, Elliot's not aware of this from the Dark Army at this point, but he is trying to sort out what the malware is and he's working on it and everyone is... Um, in the office is working on it. Gideon is shutting down all the appointments. He's canceling everything. Uh, Gideon sees Elliot and he gives him a look, a look of suspicion. But he's not the only one that's looking at uh, Elliot. It's uh, Ollie is as well. So Elliot sits down. He starts working on it. Ollie comes over. He has these hard drives in his hand. And he basically tells Elliot that he has to go to this uh, company called uh, Blank Disk to have the hard drives erased. And he's like, oh, why don't you go get someone else, I, you know, an IT guy to get it? And he's like, everyone swamped with this. I need you to do this, bro. You know, basically, Ollie is, uh, I guess you can say, over Elliot. He doesn't want to make this uncomfortable. Elliot observes the fact that uh, Ollie is sweating. And he's wondering what was up with Elliot. He seems to be really trying to pressure Elliot to do this. And Elliot, you know, gives in. He's going to go to get these hard drives wiped. And he goes, you have to be there by 2. Why don't you leave now? And he's like, it's it's only noon. He goes, yeah, you, you need to go and do this. You know, you need to do this. So Elliot takes the hard drives. He gets on his computer. He does what he does best, which is a hack. Ollie and he sees from Holly's Gmail that he's been emailing Angela and so now he knows that something's up just by the subject heading and he goes and he meets with Angela when he meets with Angela he finds out that uh, you know what the hack was and he's wondering why Angela you know didn't come to him about the hack and you know why didn't you let him know that you were she was being hacked and that she had to do this and she's like Elliot you haven't been here you've basically checked out on this and they're having this conversation about their friendship. And Angela's like, you know, all this has happened way before whatever happened to Shayla. You know, this hasn't been a month. It hasn't been two months. You have basically have not been here. And she's very frustrated with Elliot. She knows Elliot is lying. That he's holding back on her. Elliot knows that so she knows. And he's like, and he, he spouses because he's kind of talking, you know, to the audience, to his friend, you know, that, you know, hackers have this wall and she wants to peep peer over his wall but she, she knows she can never see who he really is and he's never going to show show Angela who he really is and so they're a bit, a, a bit of an impasse and he begins to realize that the hack at All Safe which is messing up with the network but it's not malicious and him going to this um, place to have the hard drives um, wiped out is the appointment with White Rose and this is all had been a setup. And that, that he needs to get to this appointment. Uh, just prior to that, there was a scene with Tyrell and he's at home. He had left the office to go home and he's consulting with his wife. His wife doesn't know at this point that he murdered um, he murdered the woman. He murdered Knowles' uh, wife up on the roof. And they're strategizing and she's wondering why they haven't heard anything uh, from the wife because he was supposed to have sex with her, take pictures, and blackmail her. And he's like, you know, it, th these things take time. Blackmailing is very delicate. We don't know his work. His wife is very frustrated because they've been planning this and that he needs to basically step up his game to get this done. He tries to reassure her, but he is in super panic mode. He does not know what to do and he cannot no longer consult with his partner on anything because he murdered a woman, I, you know, he messed up, he fucked up, basically. And so now, <clears throat> Elliot is going to the meeting to White Rose. So Elliot goes to the place where he's supposed to take the drives, and he knows this is the, white, the meeting for the White Rose. He announces himself, he goes to a room, uh, which is a Faraday cage, and, and we'll talk about that and what is real. And he meets with a technician, it's all in, in white, technician leaves the room and he's wondering why uh, the guy left and as he as they pan away to show the guy leaving and they pan back uh, White Rose is in the room 
and White Rose, uh, she uh, introduces herself and says that uh, he has three minutes to convey whatever it is uh, for this meeting, and then they're done. And he's like, why did you stop? Why did you hack? You need to wait. Uh, and she's like, there's again, you're conveying information she already has you're you know basically wasting your time and she has these beeps for every 30 seconds and basically every minute uh it conveys the ticking of the time um letting her know how much time she has and she basically says she has 17 other items on the agenda and she has other things she needs to do and basically he conveys to her that they have a method to to take out the rest of the the five additional places that uh, Evil Corp has placed their backup drives. And she goes, finally, you convey some information that she has a use of need. And he goes, well, you know, why did you hack? And also, it was the point. And why did you back up? This is, you know, your problem. She goes, you deviated from the plan when you attacked Kobe. You convey suspicion. Um, because you convey suspicion, We this is why we hacked Gideon. Gideon's suspicious. Is he place the server that you infected as a honeypot. Elliot was unaware of this. Ah, so you are unaware of this, but you want to continue on this hack. And goes, we can take care of it. We have a plan for taking out the rest of the backup drives. And uh, he will take care of the server. And she basically tells him that in 50 hours and 23 minutes, the hack is on. All parties will be ready. So basically, he needs to basically get his shit together and convey this hack. And she tells him that she hacks time while he hacks people. So this is a whole different type of methodology going on here. The different types of, I guess you can say, ethos or patterns or, or ways upon which people view the world. White Rose views things through time, um, time management, timing of doing things. And he views things through people. He as a, you know, the hacking of people, hacking of his therapist, hacking of his friend. Uh, hacking, uh, probably uh, no doubt hacking of, the hacking of Gideon, which is about to take place. He hacks people. He he figures out how people work. That's how he got into Steel Mountain. That's how he put the Raspberry Pi into the mountain. Um, all these different types of deals, all these different types of ideas. And so they're colliding here. And so basically a timeline has been set. 50 hours to 23 minutes, the plan to take down Evil Corp is going to happen. All Elliot has to do now is figure out how to take the honeypot off and that means hacking into Gideon hacking into um, and making sure that the server is no longer a honeypot but back onto the full network and as he leaves the meeting because the three minutes are up and he, before he leaves the meeting he asks um, White Rose why she's doing this and um, the time is up and she doesn't convey the answer but before she leaves also, she lets him know that, you know, next time, because Elliot was like, next time, because she knew about the honeypot, that she could have been hacking Gideon, that he's been, Gideon's been suspicious of Elliot, that they could have told him. And she goes, there won't be a next time. This is, I don't have enough time to meet people twice, and he's not worthy of meeting her twice. And she's also conveying, and it's also conveyed in this, the dialogue they have, this very short time they had, something that Tyrell has already conveyed to Elliot that he's kind of a bit disappointed in Elliot. He expected something more significant from Elliot uh, when they were at Steel Mountain in the bathroom, that he thought Elliot was a bit more, that this whole hack that he's doing, this revenge plan is very pedestrian. And she conveys that she's a bit disappointed with Elliot too, that she expected more from him. So this is whole disappointment expectation has been happening. And even Angela in their conversation that Angela and and uh, Elliot have had, there's a bit of a disappointment. Like she never expected, and she doesn't convey this to Elliot, that she was going to have to end up ending their friendship, their relationship, because of his behavior and his non-communication and just all the stuff that dealing with Elliot has come to, uh, that she's going to have to give up on him. She never expected that to happen. And so you have that mindset in, in Elliot as well, but also he talks about it as he's leaving, that he's been infected with... Uh, White Rose time management, time paradox. She, she's infected him and he's trying to think and think and think and he's talking to his friend and he wishes he could just, you know, manage time and leap forward to the conclusion. And as he's thinking it, to try to calm himself down because he's kind of going into a bit of a panic mode of himself, he's sitting there um, at the desk um, at Allsafe and we have no idea how he got there. It's just Boom, he's at the point, he's somehow like 
almost time travel. There's a gap in time. And we'll talk about this um, much later. But here he is um, at All Safe. And then what has happened is basically F Society hacks into the network and is on the feed and it's on the television set and is telling them that they're responsible for the hack into into all safe they're responsible for the hack and they talk about all safe and Gideon and everything and everyone in the office rushes into watches um, F Society talk and initially Gideon was going to turn it off but they start talking about Gideon and all safe and then start listening and Elliot is waiting for everyone to get in there and then he's goes to uh, getting his phone. He does a few things. He hacks into Elliot, uh, Elliot's phone. He gets the command prompt. He's at his desk, and he basically takes the control of uh, Gideon's uh, credentials, and he pulls off the uh, honeypot and puts it back onto the network, and he knows that within 40 hours, the, the, the uh, server will be back on his full command. And then he erases his information and Gideon's looking around and he's wondering why why he doesn't see Elliot. And Elliot's at his desk and he's, Elliot's rushing to finish what he's doing. He sees Gideon's coming and Gideon starts yelling at Elliot. He goes, everyone in this company is in that room watching basically everything is float and he goes what are you doing at your desk and and la doesn't have an answer he he doesn't have a response and he getting like super pissed about this he's like very suspicious of what's happening and then more stuff goes on and, and getting is pulled away and Elliot knows that at the time the clock is ticking on him and uh gideon that what Elliot has done the relationship to him is afraid that Gideon just knows there's something wrong and Elliot is really in the crosshairs here. So we cut away to Tyler and he's in his car and he's talking to Mr. Robot and Tyrell is telling him, you know, we're supposed to be allies. I need to know what you're planning. I need to know what's going on. And Mr. Robot's like, we're not allies, you know, we're not going to be able to agree on anything. And Tyro is really desperate, and he, he grabs Mr. Robot, and he goes, "There, I know your secret. I think there are people close to you that are going to be very, you know, not happy if I were to tell them your secret. And Mr. Robot is like, you can weigh the, the pros and cons on this and tabulations, but we both know you're not going to tell anyone. That is in the benefit, I guess, of both of them, really, for whatever was being planned to go forward. So if you go ahead and tell people, go ahead and tell people. That's... As fine. So Mr. Robot leaves, and it's very interesting. And there's their interactions. And then Tyrell is back at his home, and he grabs like a big bottle of vodka, and he's chugging it. And his wife was like, "Wow, um, I thought I was going to be graduating you here. Uh, you know, the gala is canceled, which means you know he's probably declining his position uh, for CTO. I thought you were responsible for this, but you're, you know, once again, she's kind of like." <clears throat> Like, what's going on with you? What's happening? And Tyrell is like, he, he like, gets on his knees because she's sitting down on the couch and she's eating these um, olive oils with his fork. And he's like, I just met with somebody I thought was just a lowly, you know, te- computer technician. But he has his plan. At first, I thought it was just petty revenge, but he has a, like, basically a grander plan. He's, he's like a god. He, there's something coming, and we've been focusing on the wrong things. We're trying to get, you know, to be CTO of Evil Corp, this great corp, this big corporation, when we should have been focusing on other things. We've been focusing on the wrong people. It's just like, what is going on with you? What is happening? Why are you doing this? What's going on? And he's like, I basically, you know, she should be focusing on what is above us. And he's like, God. And she like laughs at him. And then the, then the doorbell rings. And she tells him, go, go get the door. And so he gets the door. And it's uh, the detective says they tried to meet him earlier at his office. And they've come to his home. And uh, she comes up, up upon him. And he's like, um, you know, I'll meet you at the office tomorrow. And they're like, no, uh, this is time sensitive. Can we, we need to talk to both of you. His wife is there. And she's like, you know, what is this about? And they're like, well, there was a, you know, there was a murder at your place, your husband's place of employment. Uh, you both know the deceased. And he goes, who's the deceased? Susan Nolan's. Um, and his wife is like really shocked by this. And, but she covers really quickly. She goes, come on in detectives. You know, this is very terrible news. 
and she as they're walking in she's giving her husband like the the, the dagger's eyes about this she goes to the detectives being you know the big you know the hostess with the mostess asks them if they need anything any tea any water they give her you know the drink orders they sit down and they're asking Tyrell, you know, are you okay? What's going on with you? Um, prior to her um, going into the kitchen, because uh, the living room and the kitchen are connected together, uh, she had picked up the olive oils and pulls out the fork that she had. And she goes into the kitchen and you can't really see her. And then all of a sudden you hear a bit of a scream. So Tyrell gets up and goes over and it, her water is broken. So he tells the detectives, you know, his water's broken. They think the baby's coming. And he looks at her and she looks over and there's a fork with blood on it. And obviously she has punctured her um, her water to force the baby to come. And she's like, you're not, I'm not going to let them take you away from us. Basically her and the baby. So that is the end of that part of the story for the moment. Um, so obviously his, his baby's on the way. And then we get, and we are meeting with Elliot and Darlene. Um, often it's kind of like a I guess they're still around where the F society is because in the background there's like a roller coaster or something they're like at the wharf or something and they're meeting and they're talking with one another so they're meeting and they're talking and Elliot was like um, you know did you did you complete the all dream hack which is the hack to control the start to control the climate controls and all the offsite places and she's like, yeah, it went out with a hitch. I'm, you know, I'm pretty smart and capable of doing things. He, not, not like you would care. And he's like, you know, you know, he cares. We, we're going to do this. You know, everything's accomplished in 40 hours. The hack is going on. And she's like, this is really happening. And he's like, yeah, this is really happening. We should celebrate. She screams. She's enthusiastic. She starts congratulating Elliot. She, you know, she, she's saying he's the best person she knows. It's everything, all of this is happening because of him. And she's like, you know, I really love you, Elliot. And then he leans in and kisses her and she freaks out and she's like, oh, my God, Elliot, what is wrong with you? And he goes, what? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know. And she goes, Elliot, I need you to, you to tell me who you think I am. And he's like, you're Darlene. You're Darlene. He keeps saying it. You're Darlene. You're Darlene. And she goes, Elliot, I need you to tell me who you think I am. And before she even says it, Elliot says, you're my sister. And she, she's like, before that, like when he kissed her, she's like, you forgot again, didn't you? And like, obviously this hadn't happened the first, this has happened before. And he freaks out, he puts his hood on, takes his back and he, he leaves. And he goes to the subway and he starts freaking out. He's like, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. And then all the memories about Darlene start rushing in. He starts remembering things like, you know, she ran away in the third grade. They used to sing for a grand chocolate together. They they both didn't get along with their mom. He's freaking out in the subway. He's freaking out the fact that he's crazy. He's saying, I'm crazy, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. He should have stayed on the meds. He should have listened to Krista. He can't believe this is happening. How could he not remember Darlene? Why is it he's remembering things now? What is happening to him? He gets home. He's like, he's talking to himself. He's never should have created his friend. He looks in the mirror and he's looking at himself. He's like, how could I forget Darlene? How could I completely forget a completely forget a whole entire person? He's looking at the mirror. He sees himself. He sees Angela. He sees Tyrell. He sees uh, the F Society mask. He sees Mr. Robot. He even sees Darlene. He's just starts flashing. He breaks the mirror. He's panicking and he's he's trying to he's trying to look some himself on the internet. He can't find any information about himself. And then he realizes he goes and he goes to his little uh, CD flip book and he's going through it and he goes to the first one and there's a blank CD. And so he pulls out the blank CD, puts it in the computer and there's all the information about his life, all the pictures, everything. And he's just freaking out even more. And then he goes and he pulls a picture down from the top of the roof. That is a picture we've seen of him, of him and his uh, mother. But now that we look at it, we see a picture of him, his mother, Mr. Robot and Darlene. Because on the computer, you see all these pictures of him and Mr. Robot as a child. He starts having memories about Mr. Robot. And it's clearly obvious that Mr. Robot is his father. There's even a picture of him as um, getting a Back to the Future 2 uh, VHS. And he's dressed as uh, the doctor. And uh, Mr. Robot, is, I guess, dressed as Marty McFly. 
and he has all these pictures of him and Darlene and Mr. Rub at him and Darlene and and it's just all rushing to him and he's freaking out. He doesn't understand. How could this have happened? And then there's a knock on the door and it's Mr. Robot. And he opens it and he goes, um, Mr. Robot tells him we need to talk. So thus ends another great episode of Mr. Robot. Again, it ends on a great note. It leaves you wanting more. Uh, Now we're gonna talk about what was real on, on the show. So let's talk about what was real on the show. Uh, there were quite a few things. Uh, one was the social engineering aspect. There was the one where Ollie was trying to kind of pressure, I wouldn't say social engineering, but he was kind of pressuring Elliot to do what he needed to be done, which was a kind of epic fail by just basically pulling rank on Elliot to take the hard drives and go to the, the blank place to have the, the hard drives uh, erased. Um, the one that was very successful and was kind of cl- slick was Darlene as she was looking through you know the Wall Street uh, boyfriend guy that she was with looking for his safe finding it and trying to figure out what his um, his uh, security numbers to open up the safe and she's looking around she's looking for the kind of like the social prompt the prompt that people have whether it be a picture a uh, little figurine an item something like a password prompt that will help someone remember what their security password is for the safe and she looks and she sees the guy's uh, college degree which is prominently displayed uh, near the safe and realizes that the numbers are his graduation date she prompts it in boom she opens the safe, gets the gun. Uh, the other kind of successful thing that was going on here was the the use of the honey pot. So honey pots are often used in the security game. They're a, a trap set to detect, deflect, or in some manner, counteract attempts to authorize use of information systems from the definition from Wikipedia. And basically what uh, Gideon's done is basically he isolated the infected server CS30 uh, from the main network and and basically put it like in a virtual uh, network where it appears to be within the evil corpse network but in fact is not and is a way to trap uh, F society when they hack again or try to hack again and use it and that way uh, when they go in there uh, they're able to basically hack back F society infect them and trace them back to their, their point of origin and it's very important that uh, they get this honeypot Reactivated back onto the network that server because that's where the F society rootkit is. And Gideon's use of the honeypot and the fact that he was able to isolate the server and decided to do that was very clever on his part. It's what he's supposed to do as a security consultant. Uh, that's typically what they do. Uh, what Elliot did to not only use a bit of social engineering, like a distraction, a sleight of hand to have F society to call out all safe at the, the, uh, place of employment and the fact that he was able to go in and use the uh, <clears throat> credentials, hack into basically Gideon's phone, get his credentials, get into infect it so he can have uh, full access appear that everything he's doing is coming from Elliot's computer, Elliot's phone, Elliot's, I'm not Elliot's phones, but Gideon's information. So when he he co- talks to the network in Dulles, uh, let the server farmer know to put the, put the honeypot back on. Um, basically, uh, that particular hack is something that hackers do all the time when they try to steal people's credentials and look at and spoof and appear to be uh, an authoritative place. Uh, this sometimes happens when malware affects a an already existing company's uh, servers. Then the, the thieves steal the credentials and then they will spam the clients or they will hack into the clients and appear to be you know, they're from Bank of America or uh, recently within the cryptocurrency space. Uh, Coinbase gets this a lot. Uh, what happened recently was uh, their email client that they used to contact their to their uh, clients, uh, the, the, the service provider was hacked. And so there was a lot of uh, Coinbase customers who were asked for their passwords and information because they were trying to say, oh, there was a problem with the network. We need you to re log on, connect here, and enter your password and connect into your Coinbase account. That's a false thing. This happens quite often uh, within the um, the internet world so that's a technique that is utilized and basically that's what Elliot did was he used that technique to get into Gideon's information and to pretend to be uh, Gideon to order to get the honeypot active again 
Uh, the other thing is uh, the Faraday cage. The Faraday cage is something that exists. It is a method to block out um, any kind of electronic signals. It is often used for the purpose of uh, like a clean room to protect data information or to test uh, information to make sure things are secure so they don't get infected. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways to make a Faraday cage. You can even make one at home. Uh, I have some links in at home about that where you can use basically aluminum foil and carbon cardboard boxes or a metal box basically is a way to prevent prevent uh, signals from going in and out uh, this is something that you know even Edward Snowden did when he was talking to reporters he placed all their phones in a uh, the freezer of a refrigerator so that way their signals can be tracked or traced or someone can use their phone to listen in on his location or even the conversations um, that were happening he was happening with reporters so it's a common technique or a common device is utilized by all sorts of different types of businesses that they have for the purposes of their uh, electronics place. The actual place in itself, blank drivers, is you will see this a lot with uh, major companies and corporations that they will outsource places that will uh, take their old computers or old hard drives and destroy them. Much like how uh, Elliot does at home where he pulls all these drivers and he uh, fries the uh, little SIM card. Cards. Well, that's that's a place where they're at. Does that they go and they drill holes into the to the hard drivers. They wipe everything out so no one can go back, find these in the trash can or something or in the dump and redeploy or reuse that information. Uh, you also see that with like shredding companies. It's the, the equivalent of the paper end, uh, but for the electronic purposes. So this place called Blank Drive was um, outsourced. Why all say for that purpose is an existing company that utilized, and so Elliot going there is not unusual. It, what was unusual is the fact that somehow the Dark Army was able, for a brief period of time of three minutes or more, was able to control this place for the purpose of this meeting. Which again talks about the technique that Elliot focuses on more of a social engineering aspect of using his hacking techniques to hack people. That's how he's able to get into different infrastructures and understanding of people and how they behave and what they do and their responses. Uh, the biggest uh, example of that is the episode with Steel Mountain when he uh, was talking to Bill to kind of get access to the second level, uh, when he basically destroyed Bill's confidence to get a supervisor. Uh, while White Rose focuses on time. Things are supposed to be deployed at a certain time. Things are supposed to happen at a certain time. The other thing is suspicion. Uh, hackers are paranoid and suspicious of everybody. They don't trust anybody. They don't even trust each other. And the fact that uh, Elliot placed all the blame on uh, Terry Colby for the hack Rose caused uh, the Dark Army and White Rose to raise their flags about this whole endeavor and all together because he placed an unnecessary component, an unnecessary, unnecessary variable into the whole plan by making this a revenge thing against Terry Colby. And so that's why they hacked into Allsafe and started monitoring Gideon. And because of that, they were aware of the fact that there was a honeypot involved. And so it's all about time management, all about suspicion, and all about uh, protecting your resources there. I didn't personally see any uh, specific philosophy when it comes to hacking, when it comes to time management or time hacking. It's a very interesting component I personally have never really seen before, but it does have you know an extra dramatic effect for the show, knowing that they only have the moment that LA left uh, 50 hours until everything is a go. And that uh, within 48 hours, not 40 hours, but within 48 hours, the server will be back on. So there's a small window of time that they have of less than two hours to, to do this hack, to, to hack, uh, you know, evil corp and take everything down. So Dark Army's responsibilities are China, while um, F Society's responsibilities are to hack the evil corp servers, which they have Darlene's rootkit already in place, and then take out all drain. Uh, the, the hack that they have there, which is important, which they discovered and figured out how to do last episode, was that uh, all the climate control network uh, that Evil Corp uses to do climate control their um, backup places, like Steel Mountain and the five other places they've contracted to do, are all on the same network. And because they're all on the same network, 
they're able to target that all dream the the company itself's network and be able to control all the climate control places um, at the same time and thus do what they originally were going to do which was to heat everything up at Steel Mountain and thus destroy all the, the data drives in there. Now they can do it at all six places at once. So all the places are moving. Everything is going, well, according to plan. And the other thing is the, I guess you could say real, the chain custody thing with the dot file about Kobe, whether or not he is responsible for the hack or not. Um, I guess that you can say is also real. Like if you break chain in custody, it can't be used in, in the court of law. It, it, it is a legality issue. It's often used um, in court cases and things of that nature. So there's a real component to that. And that pretty much covers everything except maybe like blackmail, which is something that hackers do quite often. Um, they'll hack into an infrastructure. Uh, the recent case is Ashley Madison. Ashley Madison uh, was hacked. The people that hacked it wanted uh, to receive funds in Bitcoin or they were going to lease the data. Ashley Madison didn't pay, so the data has been released. And thus, uh, in essence, a very highly prominent company has in essence been destroyed all the data has been released in three different chunks I've been to, from the latest report I've seen and now Ashley Madison is facing lawsuits class action lawsuits up to almost 537 million dollars I'm sure there's going to be a lot of individual lawsuits there's a lot of uh, damage coming from uh, the fact that this information was released since this is something the hackers do uh, ransomware is another thing that they do where they hack into an infrastructure and they encrypt everything and if you don't pay the amount which is in bitcoin uh to the hackers and then they won't give you the keys to release your information what uh tyrell was going to do with his blackmail was uh originally he was supposed to sleep with susan knowles uh take pictures and then blackmail her so that her husband will uh step down and then tyrell will become the cto of evil corp that's not what happened so that pretty much covers up what is real um, on this episode. It was very exciting, very engaging. I look forward to the next episode. But um, yeah, it was, it was great stuff. It was another great episode of Mr. Robot. So that's it for the review. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And until next This has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.